Coach, my first question is for you. Benajah Laney over the past two games is a plus minus, a plus 64. Second best in franchise history, at least when they started documenting that stat. So what does it mean to have a player with that kind of box score, even when she's not at her usual 20 point per game production? You know, it's great. I mean, she hangs her hat on playing defense, guarding the best player every single night. And I think I, I said that in the last game. She uh, takes it on herself. She's going to compete. She's she's tough as nails. And uh, she works her butt off. And to still, you know, be effective on offense too at 31 minutes, that was a pretty fast game out there tonight. And, um, you know, even though Caitlin uh, got some, you know, got some looks tonight, well, I think I still think, you know, we, we made it hard for her as much as we could. Hi, all. Uh, thanks for being here. If I could have one for each of you, that would be great. Sandy, starting with you, can you take us through how much of a luxury it is to not be worrying about the chemistry between the starters and the fact that you were able to get five bench players in double-digit minutes? Yeah, look, I think that's... I, I talked about that's going to be important for us. Year two, these uh, players know how to play with each other and the system that we have, and um, that's a luxury that we have. How do we continue to grow on that? I think that's our focus here. Um, there's still areas that we know we can get better and, and we will with time but to be able to go to the bench and and for them to bring in some energy and they're still learning I mean you know we can't uh, look too much deeply into it because they've only played together a hot minute haven't played much with the starters here as well but we'll continue to grow that over obviously this crazy schedule that we have. And uh, JJ, for you, I'm curious if you can describe how meaningful of a performance it was today for Niara, who had 15 minutes off the bench, and what did you learn about what she can do? Um, well, I don't think I learned anything. Um, you know, we trust her to go out there and make plays. We understand that she's a, a really quick post player that can go by a lot of other post players in this league, and I think she did that tonight. I think she was really locked in defensively, making an extra effort to, you know, get the rebounds, to get back into plays, to contest uh, whether it was Boston or any of the other post players. So that's what we're going to need from her, you know, going throughout – uh, going throughout the season, and um, she has to bring that every night. So I don't think we're in, we're shocked at all, but we're happy that she's out there doing what she's supposed to do. And Stewie, for you, can you take me through how the team post game interview idea came together, and what statement did you want to make in doing that? Um, well, we were just trying to huddle, and um, <laughs> Holly wanted all five starters, and at that point, we had the entire team there, so. Um, we all just stood there, and um, I think that just showed a sign of us continuing to, to kind of go through this together. Um, we were close last year, but we're even closer this year, and, and just really um, <clears throat> appreciating that and enjoying it. Um, last year, things got a little bit crazy for everyone coming here that was new, um, and now we're settled, and, and we know what, what we're trying to do on and off the court. Sandy, the way that the threes were falling in the first half, were those, I guess, the same shots that you had gotten the first two games and they were finally going in? And is that maybe a sign of that part of the offense sort of clicking at this point? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think Indiana, I think we missed, they saw us missing a lot in the first two games and they decided probably to clog the paint up a little bit and we got some wide open looks. But, um, you know, we got some great shooters. You can miss some shots in one game, but I don't think over the course that we're not going to. We had a high percentage shot when we made them. We had open ones in previous games, we missed them. Yeah, maybe that's, uh, you know, not having their legs, some of them haven't played uh, overseas and still getting their legs under them as well. Thanks. Uh, to each player... Now that you've seen Caitlin two games in a row, and you're obviously used to all the hype and spectacle and all that, but now that you've seen Caitlin two games in a row, what do you think of her game and her start as she makes her way as a pro? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, she's a, a knockdown shooter, and she has that range. And, um, you know, obviously when you come into this league and you're a number one pick, everyone's going to know where you are on the court at all times. Um, she's looking to make that the pocket pass and continue to – that's going to be the growth of this team over the season is um, them figuring out what the right spot, spots are depending on what defenses they're going to do. So, um, you know, I think that us up here, it's, it's respect. Obviously, we know she's a, a great player and um, just trying to do whatever we can to make it tough. Yeah, I think – I think the media needs to give her a little bit of grace and, and time to develop into a, <laughs> into a player, you know, and she's learning every game as she's out there. And obviously her impact on this league is going to be is going to be tremendous and only grow as she matures. But just give her some time man. you know, look at look at Kelsey Plum and how it was for her when she first came into the league and the player that she is now. And, um, 
yeah, just 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 give her some grace. Hey, Stewie over here. Congrats on the win. You talked last game against Indiana about uh, running in transition, being aggressive. Today was more the same. You guys won five big points, twenty-eight to two. Did it also? Was it also a welcome sign that as you guys are pushing pace, they also did as well, even though they weren't converting on their end? Yeah, I mean, I think that they tried to. That was their game plan: was trying to push pace um, as much as they could, and um, we liked that. I think we just tried to run as much as we could. Um, and then there's a fine line of making sure, like when things are getting crazy and maybe there's no team is converting, um, walking it up and, and running a good play, and um, you know, making sure that we're trying to run as quickly as possible, but also steady diet of running plays and getting what we want. Um, hey guys, uh, great game. Uh, obviously, we a lot of a lot of our attention as media has been about <laughs> veterans versus versus rookies. And I was wondering if you could um, maybe share one thing you would tell your rookie self looking back now. Mm. Um, the <laughs> um, my first two years, we lost like a lot. Um, like not getting used to losing but understanding how to uh, navigate that and instead of just being completely frustrated taking whatever I can and learning from it Um, and just being in a gym obviously there's a there's a jump from college to WNBA this is the best league in the world and we wouldn't be here um, being our best you know if it wasn't that um so just, I don't know, keep learning, keep paying attention, keep watching film, and create a good schedule for myself. That's what I would tell myself. She said it. <laughs> Stewie, you talked in the last game about when buildings have playoff energy. Yeah. And, you know, building was full. Tonight, now that it, you've had your home opener here, I'm wondering, how do you as a player feed off of that and – Is that now the standard here? Maybe not a sellout every night, but to really pack the place to have an engaged crowd. Well, I like it to be a sellout every night. I think think we love it as fans. And I think um, the way that I could describe how it feels um, and having that home court advantage in the third, right, when we're, we're a little bit tired and we're trying to push through, we have our fans cheering for us, giving us more energy. Um, coming after a timeout, whether it's a big play or not, and, and really feeding off of that. And, and that's what home court advantage is. Uh, Stewie, the, you guys earned the Liberty over $2 million in ticket revenue today from this game, which is the most ever in wow. WNBA history. Just talk what that means for the league. I mean, you guys are trying to obviously have charter flights now, and when the next CBA comes out, probably earn more money. Mm-hmm. How big is it that, I mean, you guys are a big part of that, but also Clark being here and in the league, how that helps everybody that heard effect and for you guys specifically getting this huge number from ticket revenue for the day. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I think that obviously the the buzz and um, just the eyes that, that Caitlin has brought from Iowa now to the WNBA is, is going to be a, a collective win for all. Um, and now that you know, she's a part of our league and a part of our 144. Um, even though we're competing against each other, we're making sure that we're continuing to lift up this league together. Um, and I think that's what's the most important thing behind it. Obviously, we have to put the best talent on the court every night, uh, but making sure that, you know, there's growth. I think that um, when I first started in the league, some teams weren't even making revenue. And I'm sure Sandy can talk about that too, but um, it's, it's a long time coming. And, you know, we're happy to be at this point, but we're not satisfied. Kyle. Yes. Over here. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, just one quick one for, for anybody. Not me. 28 to 2. <laughs> 28 to 2 fast break points today. And the offense, you guys were moving the ball really well. But now this is three games. I know it's a very small sample size. It's early. But you've surrendered just 12 points across these uh, three games total on defense in the fast break. What has worked so well when you talk about that cohesion and getting back and having each other's backs? Um, yeah, I think defensively we, we understand that I think our biggest area of growth is going to be on that side. And – We've talked a lot about it, just getting into our matchups, 
understanding that we can use our defense to, you know, then propel us offensively. But I think everybody just kind of being matched up, understanding that sometimes in transition you have to get the closest player and just build that wall behind the ball, behind the, <laughs> yeah, build that wall behind the ball. Um, and then, yeah, just going from there. But I think, like like we've said before, our chemistry is building. We, we understand how to trust each other, and it's kind of it's, it's showing out there. Brianna, how's the start this season this year compared to last year, your first year with the team? Um, our start is much better because we lost the first game last year. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I think that we're just – we're excited. We're happy. We're we're happy to be here, and we're happy to continue to grow and get better. And and understanding that, you know, everyone in this franchise does something special, and how can we make it collectively work together? Um, but for me personally, I couldn't wait to be back in Barclays. Ever since we um, we left in October, uh, I wanted to be back here, and uh, knew that our fans did too. So it was really great to be here tonight, today. Stewie and JJ. Hey, guys. Um, we, obviously, the respect for Caitlin is evident, but when you guys are 3-0, and defending runner-ups, you know, for the entire thing, is there any frustration of the lack of narrative push of that or any satisfaction in, you know, having two of those three wins come against the Fever? Um, like Stewie said, we understand that, like, collectively we have to grow the league. Um, I think as competitors, we go out there and we, we, you know, we make our statement. We win the game. We play hard, um, and we come together to win. But ultimately, it is what it is. She, she has the the media behind her because she's a great player. She had a great um, collegiate, what? <laughs> she had a great uh, collegiate career and has done amazing. And now she's in the WNBA. But at the same time, we have to respect the league and the competition by going out there and playing our best, regardless of who that is that we're playing against. So, um, I think that's what we did. Hi, this question is for JJ. Uh, JJ, if you combine the regular season and playoffs, today was your 100th career double-double. So when you look at a stat like that and what you've been able to do throughout your career, how much is that a testament to what you've been able to do? Yeah, just being consistent. Um, for me, when I come into games, that's one of the things that I kind of pride myself on, like being able to get a double-double, um, doing what I do on the boards. But yeah, it, it means a lot to kind of have that level of consistency throughout my career. Um, it feels good to to be healthy and moving the way that I want to move and being able to help uh, contribute to this team um, and moving us in the right direction for sure. Hi, everybody. Um, for Sandy, this was the second straight game where Indiana started to make a little bit of a run, but you guys were able to sort of like withstand that and then push to sort of like win convincingly. What do you think it says about the chemistry of the team right now that they're able to withstand those runs and still be able to win convincingly? Look, I think the, the experiences that we went through in year one together help us in year two. Um, you know, we faced a, a lot of adversity. And, um, and that's how you grow as a team, isn't it? All the experiences that you have, you remember it, you know how to come together. And, and you know, the players talked about the connections and I think that's so important, building deeper connections. So, uh, you know, the communication that we have out there, the respect that we have for each other, that allows us to come down and, and execute at a high level. And, you know, we're an experienced group. So we've got to, you know, utilise that to our advantage as well. Hi, Jada Kamel with Brooklyn Paper. Um, I'm sure there's this added anticipation and energy when you're playing f at your home court for the first time. So, Coach, I'm wondering what that conversation looks like to your players when you're preparing them for that first home game. Yeah, look, obviously, we're all excited. Yeah, we, we did speak about it. I'm like, you know, the fans were having a sellout. And we had a sellout in Indianapolis, but this is our home court. And we really created such a great buzz last year. And we appreciate the fans. And, you know, they're coming out to watch us. You know, maybe some watching Caitlin Clark too. But uh, coming to watch us. And, and that's we should take pride in that and how we perform. Um, so that was our focus. And, you know, we want to protect our home court. You know, we've got all these people. Let's go play great basketball and making sure that we're getting the win every time we step on court. And Stewie, a question for you. There was this moment of trading buckets between both teams, between you and Sabrina and Jones. Um, I'm wondering what that call and response energy felt like on the court. Um, just continuing to, you know, whenever they make a tough shot, hopefully it was after the ball had been moved a few times, um, and not dwelling on it and going and get our own, getting our own bucket. Um, and, you know, that's that's also the difference was, like, they made a run, but it wasn't – we also made our run. Um, so it wasn't just, like, one-sided. And um, that's the competitiveness in, in the WNBA.
Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.